Hi there. Today we will discuss something in toxicology. Well, let us look at uh, some aspect that is important not only from the examination point of view, but also from the practical standpoint. We will look at approach to diagnosis of a case of poisoning. There are many approaches that have been tried over a period of time. But the one that is now very popular is what is called toxidromic approach. Let us see as to how this has revolutionized management of poisoning cases. When we talk of toxidromic approach, naturally we have to know what is meant by toxidrome. And toxidrome is uh, a, com a kind of combined word where you have uh, syndrome that is commonly seen in uh, clinical medicine combined with toxicological scenario. So you call it toxidrome. But toxidromes are quite common in clinical practice as compared to syndromes which are said to be uncommon. That is important to understand. So when we talk of toxidromes, don't confuse the commonality or otherwise with syndromes. Toxidromes are very common, very useful in toxicology. Let us see what exactly toxidrome means. It is nothing but a group of signs and symptoms that consistently results from particular toxins. That is a toxidrome. In other words, it's a combination of vital signs and end organ manifestations that we are looking at. And the important signs that we look at in a toxidrome are related to number one, the CNS by way of mental status, examination, the eyes reflected as pupil size, the gastrointestinal system, which is reflecting as a peristalsis, skin manifestation, either dryness or sweating, mucous membranes, moist or dry, and genitourinary system, manifesting as retention or incontinence. Now all this appears to be a little complicated, I know, but uh, everything becomes very simplified when you look at actual toxidromes. There are several toxidromes today, maybe 20 or more, but we will look at 10 of the commonest toxidromes, which are important from the examination point of view for students, as well as we commonly encounter in clinical practice. So let's begin with toxidrome number one. The manifestations are as follows. You will see that the important uh, manifestations include bradycardia, maybe bradypnea also, sometimes tachypnea. There may also be hypothermia, but the important features are constricted pupils, increased sweating, increased peristalsis in the form of diarrhea, vomiting, and also increased urination. Then you have salivation, bronchorrhea, diarrhea, fasciculations, paralysis. You have a picture of universal secretion and excretion. In order to give you a clue, I have included a picture of somebody spraying some crops with obviously an insecticide. I'm sure looking at the overall picture with the image, you will know that this toxidrome is nothing but cholinergic toxidrome or cholinergic syndrome as it is referred to in clinical side. I would prefer to call it cholinergic toxidrome. In fact, all these will be referred to as toxidromes, not as syndromes. The most important example, of course, of a cholinergic toxidrome, organophosphate or carbamate pesticides. Don't forget the huge group of parasympathomimetic drugs and of course some mushrooms also and there are two famous mnemonics to help you remember the cholinergic toxidrome manifestations one is a so called sludge and killer bees sludge is an acronym an abbreviation that can be read off as a word where each letter stands for a manifestation s for salivation l for lacrimation u for urination d for diarrhea g for gastric distress e for emesis Killer bees are three in number. You have bronchospasm, bronchorrhea, and bradycardia. 
Then you have also have a second mnemonic, which is important to remember because there is something missing in sludge and killer bees, which is included in the second one. And that is dumbbells. The one that is missing from sludge and killer bees is M, which stands for meiosis, which is commonly seen, very commonly seen in cholinergic toxidrome. Moving on to the second common toxidrome, and that is listed here, the manifestations. I've given you a picture also to help you, to give you some clue as to what it is all about. You will notice that this is exactly a mirror image, an opposite of what was shown to you earlier. All the manifestations, almost every manifestation are just the opposite. It's almost as if everything has been reversed as compared to toxidrome number one. Toxidrome number two, therefore, is the antithesis of toxidrome one and that is why it's called anticholinergic toxidrome. And you have the examples listed here. This is a huge list, but the most important are the anticholinergic drugs that you use in practice. There are so many drugs with such manifestations, including antihistamines, anti-Parkinsonian drugs, atropine and what we call belladonna alkaloids, antipsychotic drugs, antidepressants, antispasmodics, skeletal muscle relaxants and some mushrooms. It's a big list, but it's an important list. All right, move on, moving on to the next toxidrome. Number three, there is a picture here of two individuals from Greek mythology. One is very important in clinical medicine, one is very important in forensic medicine. And usually toxicology is dealt with in forensic medicine. The fair individual is none other than hypnos and the dark individual is thanatos. Both are related to each other, both are as you can see relaxing. Hypnos, important in clinical medicine I told you and this toxidrome is actually related to that. Whereas the other person thanatos is more important in forensic medicine, thanatology, study of death. From hypnosis or hypnos we get hypnotic we are talking about the sedative hypnotic toxidrome and the features are listed here. As you can see, it's a kind of universal depression, mainly relating to the central nervous system, but also so many other systems are involved, which are also depressed. And the examples of those which can cause this sedative hypnotic toxidrome, you can see here, inclusive of ethanol and other alcohols, barbiturates, benzodiazepines and there are so many other related drugs. Some of them are substances of abuse. Moving on to number four. The image that is shown here is one of the most you know, popular or one of the most well-known images uh, with regard to biological drugs, drugs that are obtained from plants. We are looking at poppy capsule, poppy capsule which has been incised. Scientific name is Papaver somniferum. We are looking at all the features that result from opioid overdose or overdose resulting from opium and derivatives. As you can see, the important features are bradycardia, hypotension, decreased uh, body temperature, that's hypothermia meiosis, decreased peristalsis with constipation. There's also urinary retention, important features, all of which put together, we refer to as the opioid toxidrome. And these are the common opioids that you see in clinical practice and in toxicological scenarios. Many of them have got very huge kind of uh, therapeutic importance. These are all drugs which are commonly used in clinical practice. And therefore, opioid toxidrome is not at all uncommon in toxicological scenario. Some of these can also be used as substances of abuse like heroin, commonly referred to as brown sugar. All right, moving on to number five, also a very important toxidrome. You can see from the image, white powder, 
that looks looks like snow, isn't it? Common name of this particular powder is snow. In other words, we are talking about cocaine in slang. Cocaine is a very powerful stimulant and the picture that you see is one of universal stimulation where you have increased blood pressure, increased pulse rate, respiratory rate, increased body temperature, agitation, dilated pupils. There can be in severe cases seizures, arrhythmias. We call this the sympathomimetic toxidrome also called stimulant toxidrome and examples of some of these are listed here of course the most important is cocaine you saw the image that i showed you in slang we call snow don't forget amphetamines and don't forget so many other stimulants also that are commonly used in clinical practice like phenylpropanolamine ephedrine pseudoephedrine and so on and so forth Next we see number 6, toxidrome number 6 and the image alongside should give you some sort of a clue as to what we are talking about. The features are listed here, you can see increased uh, respiratory rate, hyperthermia, agitation, delirium, in decreased peristalsis, increased sweating however and then the most important features tinnitus and seizures. We are talking about a toxidrome that has got a huge list of drugs related to practically one plant and the whole thing is what we call salicylate, salicylate toxidrome. Do not think of just one which is most often thought of when we call, when we refer to salicylates and that is acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin even today used for headaches so commonly. There are so many other salicylates which are also commonly used in practice today. The list is here for you to take a look and as far as the therapeutic importance is concerned, that is pharmacology, we are looking at the toxicological aspects only. Next is a little bit tough maybe to find out as to what kind of toxidrome this is. But if you look at the last one mentioned in the list, and that is hallucinations, you will know what we are talking about. I have given you some images by way of clues. As you can see from the images, one is that of uh, several colored pills and uh, tablets. And the other image shows you rye. That is a kind of a crop that is commonly seen in the West. And uh, you get, you know, various kinds of other related crops also like barley and all that, which can sometimes get infested with fungus. And the fungus is called ergot. And ergot gives you the drug that is most commonly associated with this particular toxidrome. That is hallucinogenic toxidrome. The last aspect, hallucinations is the most important feature. But the other features are also you know, important by way of clues, you can see that much of it is in the form of stimulation. And there can also be sometimes psychiatric manifestations with frank psychosis. This is the so-called hallucinogenic or psychedelic toxidrome. The most important is the most powerful hallucinogen known to man and that is LSD, lysergic acid, diethylamide. You also have so many other kinds of drugs, many of them drugs of abuse and that these are quite commonly seen, not just in the West, but also today in India. Then we have uh, number eight, which is a little bit more difficult. You have the features here and uh, the important uh, aspects that I would like you to focus on are myoclonus, hyperreflexia, rigidity, trismus, aside from agitation, confusion, midriasis, then you also have hypothermia and so on and so forth. To give you a clue, I'll give you this image where you can see something associated with serotonin and that should uh, give you the you know, diagnosis that we are talking about serotonin toxidrome. There are so many drugs today that are, that are responsible for this kind of toxidrome. You have um, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, you have uh, SSRIs that is selective 
serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You have uh, other kinds of drugs that can enhance serotonin release. You have serotonin precursors or agonists. The details are all listed in this particular uh, slide and you can see that they are very commonly used drugs in clinical practice. And serotonin toxidrome is therefore quite commonly seen in practice. Number nine, you have an Im image that is immediately identifiable. Somebody, you know, who appears to be an alcoholic. So naturally we think of um, ethanol and you can see the features here. They are not really indicative of intoxication because we are not really talking of intoxication in this toxidrome, not alcohol intoxication, but actually withdrawal from that. And these are the you know, features that you see from alcohol withdrawal in an addict who has been consuming large amounts of liquor over a long period of time. You can see the most important thing are the ones that are listed at the end, seizures. And that is why this is called tremens, delirium tremens, because a lot of psychiatric manifestations in this particular kind of withdrawal syndrome associated with alcohol. There are other kinds of withdrawals, but this is a life-threatening, commonly seen alcohol withdrawal toxidrome or syndrome. And finally, to end the whole thing, number 10, you can see an attractive uh, picture there of a turkey. And this appears to be a dinner associated with Thanksgiving or Christmas. And you can see all the features listed. I'm sure the features together with the image should give you a clue as to what we are talking about. In slang, this particular, this particular clinical picture is referred to as cold turkey. Cold turkey is slang for heroin withdrawal. Heroin, as you have already seen just now, is an opioid. And the important manifestations of withdrawal from opiate or opioid addiction listed here. The important features again towards the end, last one especially piloerection is what gives rise to the slang cold turkey where the skin has got a kind of puckered appearance. Appearance that you see in frozen meat that is taken out of the freezer. And that is why it's called cold turkey. So we are talking of opioid withdrawal toxidrome. As you can see, these 10 toxidromes indicate very clearly how useful they are in clinical practice, in toxicological practice. You can have classical toxidromes with all the manifestations. You may have partial toxidromes with only some of the manifestation, but they are still very important in diagnosis. And it's also important that uh, while partial toxidromes are perhaps more common than the so-called complete or classic toxidromes, they are still they are still capable of providing a clue to the correct diagnosis. And uh, do understand that um, in the case of uh, multitoxin ingestion, even though you may get only a partial toxidrome, it does not necessarily imply that it is less severe. So this is all with regard to toxidromes in this particular session and uh, we will meet again in future to look at some other aspect of toxicology that is important for you. Goodbye.